Hi, Temple Betham. Uh, you're seeing my face again uh, soon after you saw it the last time. I hope that's okay. Uh, this video will be shorter than yesterday. I wanted to reach out to you to share a few more messages and also to alert you uh, to some things that we're going to be doing in the community digitally. And like last time, I didn't write this out, so I'm going to go with the flow a little bit. First of all, we're getting a lot of questions about why our synagogue is remaining open for services this Shabbat, particularly as many synagogues around the country and around the neighborhood have chosen to actually close their doors for Tfilot for services. Uh, in Bergen County, New Jersey, the Orthodox rabbinate, I believe, decided to forbid, forbid Jews from gathering together in prayer and even to forbid one another from going to each other's houses for Shabbat meals. I want you to know that I honor and respect every one of my colleagues' decisions about how they are trying to keep their community and the greater society safe and secure. And everyone is listening to different advisors and medical guides. And we are listening to many advisors and medical guides and social um, welfare guides and communal health guides who disagree with one another on certain issues. There is not unanimity, as I imagine that you know. And we have currently decided to hold this line for now, which we believe is defensible. And if you do not think that it makes sense for you, then you should not come to synagogue. And I say that with love and with tenderness. Right now, we are comfortable holding Shabbat services, which we consider to be an essential mission of what it means to be a synagogue. We will be live streaming every service that this synagogue ha has moving forward. Every Shabbat service will take place in the sanctuary this Shabbat. The chapel service will also be live streamed if we have services next Shabbat. I don't know about that, but this Shabbat, yes. And every daily minion service will be live streamed either on our synagogue webpage or potentially through another technological um, instrument, either a, a go-to meeting or a Zoom call will let you know. We believe that it is safe and defensible to do so this Shabbat. We expect smaller crowds. We wouldn't mind smaller crowds. There are direct impacts. Uh, to people and to communities because of um, potential in, in being infected from the coronavirus. And there are less direct but also real and harder to identify impact to closing down spiritual communities altogether. And we are weighing that. You may get a message from me from us soon on Sunday or Monday saying that this synagogue has chosen to uh, join hands with other neighborhood communities to actually close down all public even small public gatherings, including Daily Minion, you might get that message at any time. We're not sending that message now. We do not know what the exact right uh, answer is. We are thinking about pikuach nefesh lachmir, that when it comes to uh, protecting people and saving a life, we are stringent. What we're not clear in is which are the decisions that do the best job of pe keeping people uh, in a safe place, both physically and emotionally, and psychologically, and spiritually. People are going to be suffering through this, as I said in yesterday's email. Domestic situations make it more complicated. Financial situations could be crushing. Children could be living, living through more anxiety than they were used to. People may want and need connection to one another, and to their rabbis, and to their community, more than just digital um, content can produce. If it gets to the point where we can no longer defend any in-person communal gathering, we will make that decision. Right now we haven't. And again, if you don't want to expose yourself to that risk, I honor that. I really honor that and I encourage you to stay home. And we'll see what kind of uh, Shabbat experience we have this Shabbat and that might impact our decision moving forward. Trust your instincts based on all the information that you have. That's what we are doing. We're trusting our communal leadership instincts getting lots of people to input themselves into the process, given the information that we have, which is changing, and sometimes uh, mutually contradictory. Okay, here are some things that I can now do that are happening. In addition to our holding Friday night services tonight in the building at 6.15, at 5 p.m. today, Rabbi Schatz and Rabbi Chorney and I will offer to you, probably through some kind of a live instrument like a go-to meeting or Zoom, the link actually is going to be in the email in which you're seeing this video. We're going to have 20 to 30 minutes of a pre-Shabbat prayer and spiritual experience. You can be with us live at your office or at your home. You can gather the family together. We'll be able to see one another and maybe even take some questions. We'll also record it so you can experience it afterwards if you can't be there live. 
at 5. We're going to do something similar tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for Havdalah, a little Havdalah experience as a community. In addition to the Havdalah that we're going to do at synagogue at the end of Mariv, because that is still happening, and in addition to the Havdalah you might do at home. So join us at 8 p.m. at the link that's below tomorrow night if you want to end Shabbat with us and with community. And we'll do as much or as little of this as we think the community is interested in doing. And I said in the, in the previous email, I'll try to send some kind of regular uh, messages out to the community. I'm also considering partnering with one of my dear friends, Rabbi Barry Dove Katz, who's a rabbi in Riverdale, New York, in doing occasional uh, shiurim, classes that we're going to offer together also on GoToMeeting for a half an hour, a little burst of wisdom and Torah insight for your day. We haven't worked out the details of it yet, but look for emails about that as well. Um, okay, I want to share with you a Oh, and as I said before, we're going to live stream every minion in this building, even if we don't close down for minion, which we might. Even if we don't, they will all be live streamed. And Jewish law, in my estimation, supports your considering yourself to be a part of the minion, to answer to the Baruchu, and to say Kaddish if you are in mourning because of the extraordinary circumstances right now and the reasons why which we pe people are not gathering either voluntarily or the reasons that might be causing us to close down completely. Okay. A little piece of Tova from Rabbi Simcha, Mayor Simcha of Dvinsk, who was uh, a leader of uh, the Jewish communities in Lithuania and Latvia in the end of the 19th, early 20th century. There's a verse in Parshat Kitisa which discusses the great work of Bitzal Ale, who is the master craftsman who uh, oversaw, because the general contractor and the general uh, artisan for the construction of the Mishkan, the portable tabernacle in the, in the desert. And as people are coming to bring their gifts uh, to help make the Mishkan be built and come alive and be filled with the things that needs to be filled, the Torah says that Betzal El was there, Lachashov Machashavot. It's alliterative because it's the same root, root in Hebrew, Lachashov, literally to think or to consider or to, to reason, Machashavot, thoughts. Um, things that the person was thinking about. So what does the phrase Lachashov Machashavot mean? What Rabbi Simcha Meir Dvinsk wrote in his commentary called the Mesha Chachma is as follows. But Salel was an extraordinary person and could see into the intent, the spiritual intent of each person as they brought their gift to the Mishkan. And if a person brought their gift of goods, of products, or of shekels with a full heart, with a sense of generosity of spirit and goodwill, he would divert that donation to the highest forms, the highest uses of things in the temple, to the construction of the uh, altar on which the sacrifices would take place, to the things most attached to holiness in the Mishkan. And if Betzalel ascertained with his special powers that the intent with which one was bringing one's gift was sour, or lacking goodwill, or filled with scoffing or contempt, he would accept it, but not give the donor the extra spiritual joy or uplift of having that particular gift go to a place of focused sanctity in the temple, rather to a needed but lower purpose. Here's what I want to say about this. I want us to put ourselves in the category of the donors and not put ourselves in the category of B'tzalel in the following way. My friends, focus on your kavana right now. Since we do not have all the empirical answers or certainly unanimity about what we should be doing, we do have control about how we do what we do, how we say what we say, how we hold ourselves in our conversations with one another, online, on Facebook, as we all deal with some significant national and maybe even international panic. You don't know that you are right and I don't know that I am right as I think about what a community or a city or a state or a nation should do. What I do know for me and for you is that we can control whether or not the intent, the kavana, with which we hold ourselves during this time is one that would pass B'tzalel's test. Give the kind of gift of speech, of generosity of time and of spirit, and if you have it, of funds, that would make B'tzalel take your gift and apply it to the most sanctified purposes in the temple. You can control that. 
you must control it. And on the other side, don't delude yourself into thinking that you are a B'Tzalel. You cannot discern and you cannot divine others' intents, others' motivations, others' reasons for being activated as well as you think you can. Therefore, I ask all of us to not assume that we can make such fine distinctions as B'Tzalel was able to do, to be as generous as possible as we take in what other people are contributing to this moment, contributing to this system, and in that way contribute to the growing goodwill that might have a lasting positive impact on our society, even as we tamp down the growing threat of the virus, which I hope will have less of a lasting impact on the well-being of our society and of ourselves than some people fear now. That you can control, and that I'm asking you to control and committing myself to control as we offer our spiritual response to this moment. And to that end, I want to read to you a poem that was composed by a woman named Lynn Unger for this very moment. Some of you have seen it already on social media, and I end this little video with this poem and the shortest of meditations. It's called Pandemic. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel. Cease from buying and selling. Give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, Touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart, reach out your words, reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. <clears throat> Promise this world your love <clears throat> for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we all shall live. Beautiful words with beautiful sentiments. I promise you there's something stuck in my throat. I'm not having a dry cough with a sore throat. I feel healthy and well. And I ask you, if you're still with me, to close your eyes for a moment. And we become a spiritual person who, exi who exists beyond the frenzy of this moment and whose spiritual groundedness can help carry all of us through and past the fear, the worry, the distancing, the suspicion of this moment. Breathe yourself into peace. Breathe yourself towards love. Breathe yourself through Shabbat. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And I say again that I miss you, that I love you, and Shabbat Shalom.